Welcome to the Full Nelson. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review on the Christensen Arms Ranger 22. Start off with the things that I like about this rifle. This rifle takes Ruger 1022 magazines, which if you already have a lot of 1022 magazines, that's going to be an excellent benefit. So I like that about it. I like the carbon fiber barrel on it. I like the stock that it comes with, okay, although I think um, this that's a pro and a con to me, and I'll talk about the con side of it here in a minute, but the stock is not just your typical chintzy, junky plastic stock that would come on like different models of Ruger 1022s or, or Marlin Model 60s or a Remington 597. It's much higher quality stock than that. This is probably... Uh, a two or three hundred dollar stock if you were to buy one at in the aftermarket on eBay or something like that. So the stock on it is decent. Now let's see what else do I like about it. The trigger that's in this gun, the Trigger Tech trigger, I've got it about as light as it will go and I wouldn't mind it being a little bit lighter but I don't feel like the trigger really holds me back. It breaks very cleanly. There's virtually no take up or anything like that. So the trigger in the rifle is decent. And let's see, uh, apart from that, it comes threaded, you know, from the factory. Yeah. Um, uh, other things that I like about it, the way it shoots, the gun shoots quite accurately. I have not gone out and bought any really high-end match ammunition. I've shot probably four or five different types of bulk ammunition through it and it seems to fire reliably and it seems to be more accurate than some of my 1022 variants although i'm going to be making some changes probably to some of those in the future in terms of upgrading the triggers and things like that and then we'll see how they compare side by side um, so the accuracy of the rifle i feel like it's there and those those are the things that i like about it the things that i don't like about it because it is inletted for 1022 magazines and how unique the design of this firearm is, I don't know anybody who's making aftermarket stocks or chassis for this rifle. It does not fit a standard, standard Model 700 stock or anything like that, the magazines being inletted the way they are and all that kind of stuff. So the aftermarket support in terms of stocks or chassis is non-existent. I'm not too fond of that. Part of that is because I prefer a stock that has an adjustable cheek piece and an adjustable length of pull. I would easily pull this stock off of here and swap it out for something if there was something available, but there's not. I don't like that the bottom metal is polymer or plastic instead of aluminum or, or steel. I think that they cheaped out a little bit on that. Again, the rifle, you have to understand the, the regular price for these is like $700, I believe, seven to $800. So at that price point, you're not going to get all the bells and whistles that you're going to get on a Christensen Arms rifle that's, you know, centerfire rifle that might be $1,400 or $1,500 with the carbon fiber barrel and, and stock and bottom metal and all that stuff. So, so I don't care for the bottom metal on it. Don't care for the fact that there's no aftermarket support for this this setup or this barreled action. Um, and let's see, what else besides that? I have had some extraction issues. The bolt cycling on this is not particularly smooth. Now, if you drive it straight in and straight out, most of the time it works, but I have had a handful of malfunctions. I know some other people out there have reported the same issue. So I may end up sending this back into Christensen Arms for that because I know that there are some people that have done that and they work the rifle over, change some parts out on it, and apparently they've either redesigned it or they've done something different to where they can make some changes to where if you have one that's having malfunctions, they seem to be able to fix that without much issue. Now I have run probably, if I had to ballpark it, maybe four to 500 rounds through this. And like I said, for the most part, it has been pretty reliable but on occasion it will hang up when you're cycling the bolt or when you go to extract a round, you'll run into a problem where it's just not spitting the round out and you have to reach in and pop it out by hand or something like that. But that's probably, I would say 95% of the time it's been very reliable. Maybe 98% of the time it's been quite reliable. 
So anyway, that, that gives you an idea of um, what the reliability has been like. But so that's one of the things I don't like is that I have had some malfunctions with the rifle. Now, as far as anything else I don't like, um, I personally don't care for the price point. I think there's much better offerings at the price point than this rifle. For example, I think a CZ457 is going to perform on par with this rifle and could be had for two to $300 less money than this. But that's where people will say, well, the carbon fiber barrel on this and stuff like that. If you're, if, if you're getting it to carry it around in the woods and you just need a lightweight gun, then maybe you will want this. But if you're going to do something to it like what I've done here where you're going to put a pretty beefy scope on there and stuff like that anyway, then you really shouldn't be too worried about the weight of the barrel because the gun's already going to be pretty heavy. So you might as well just make it as, you know, have a steel barrel or whatever. That's, that's not really going to be an issue. So at the price point, I think there's much better options. I think the CZ457 is a better option. And I also think at a little bit more money than this, Bergara has some offerings both with steel and carbon fiber barrels that I think are a much better option than this if you want to get into precision 22 shooting. And that is because the aftermarket support for those rifles is already there because they use a standard Model 700 footprint I believe short action footprint for their stocks. So you can change the stocks off on those and put any chassis, you can put the barreled actions for those in any chassis system you want. They still support model 700 type triggers, which this supports, it has trigger tech model 700 type trigger. But in those, not only do you get the trigger, but you get um, the magazine is inletted. So there's a variety of magazines out there that will work with that that rifle and then you have a, var a variety of options for chassis or aftermarket stocks. So for a little bit more money I think that's going to be a better option. I also think the bolt design and the reliability and the functionality of the Bergara is superior to this Christensen Arms. So that's where this kind of fits. Now I got a smoking deal on this rifle. They had some rebate going on and it was like I think $200 off. And so I found it at one place for like 640 bucks and I knocked 200 off of that. So it ended up being like 450, 460 with the, the, after everything was said and done by the time I paid my FFL transfer fee and all that kind of stuff. So for that price, I don't have much to complain about it. I mean, that puts it right in the exact dollar for dollar territory is what a CZ457 would cost you with a similar stock profile, only you have a steel barrel and all that kind of stuff. And I would say accuracy wise, they're probably gonna be sixes, but this does have a, a carbon fiber barrel and probably a little bit fancier synthetic stock than the synthetic 457 stocks that they have on some of the rifles. So anyway, that's kind of where this fits. So if you can get it for a great price, I'd recommend it. If you're gonna be spending 750 to 800, and the weight factor is a big part of the equation, then maybe it's worth it for you because of the carbon fiber barrel. If the weight factor doesn't matter, get a CZ457 for less money that will perform just as well and better aftermarket support, or purchase a Bergara, which is a real hot item right now because of its aftermarket support, because of the barreled action being able to fit into a Model 700 chassis or rifle stock. That concludes my review of the Christensen Arms Ranger 22. In the future, maybe I'll do some footage of me on the range shooting this and show you kind of accuracy and what I'm getting at different distances with various types of ammo. But I'm not gonna be doing that today. If you guys have any questions or comments or experience with this firearm yourselves, feel free to leave that in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the video. Have a nice day.